Welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Shorts, and today's episode is a very special episode. Because if you read the video description, you'll find out that this is our hundredth official episode. And today we're going to be talking about this very, very special plant here. Now, I bet you're wondering what the heck this thing is. Well, let's, uh, let's get a little zoom action on it. Rotate it just a tad to show some leaves. There we go. In that fabulous. Well, anyway, this plant, which some people are going, it's marijuana, is not. It's not even in the same family. Not even close. The scientific name of this plant is Abelmoschus manihot. Variety, Cheap Kubo's Prize. Now, its common name is South Sea Salad Tree. South Sea referring to the Pacific and Asia. It is in the family Malvaceae, which means it is a hibiscus, essentially. And one of its prior scientific names was, was Hibiscus Manahot. The Manahot part comes from its leaves resemblance to the Manahot family which are called the milk spurges, and they have palmate leaves kind of like this. Okay. The Abel Moschus part, which should sound familiar to you because it is the first specific epithet of a certain other common garden plant, okra, which is Abel Moschus esculentum, it comes from Arabic. It, the original word in Arabic means source of musk, which is a reference to the aromatic capsules that the seeds are carried in, or the fruit capsules, which technically on okra you're eating the fruit capsules, and on this one apparently you can eat them here too, so this is basically a quote-unquote tropical okra. Mmm, more than one type of okra? Oh, sign me up, baby. Now, it gets better than that. It is native to India, Malaysia, and central China, but I would say Pacific Islands as well. I mean, considering when I get into who cooks it and for what, we'll understand that in a second. Now, it is hardy in USDA zones 8 through 11, which ain't bad. I mean, 8 through 11 is pretty good. Though it's typically listed as a tropical and not actually a perennial, it is perennial and it is herbaceous in our climate. According to the Cooperative Extension in North Carolina, it's perennial here. How about that? It just dies back to the ground like a bunch of other hibiscus that we know of. Well, it prefers a soil pH of 6 through 8. It likes full sun, though partial sun is acceptable. And by full sun, we mean 6 plus hours of sun. In my trials, I grew it in a 16-inch pot, and it got to about 12 feet tall and became a problem because it kept blowing over. Yeah, yeah, metacentric height is a, is a real pain in the butt sometimes. But anyway, its height can be up to 12 feet, though and a width of three feet. However, most documentation says six feet to three feet. I found out the other way that it's not, that it can get much larger. Now, I should point out that the soil it prefers has to be fairly packed with organic matter, fairly nutritious, but good on the drainage department. Real easy. But that brings us to some facts about this lovely hundredth episode plant. <clears throat> so, it was previously known as Hibiscus Manahot. We covered that. That's its old scientific name, so some of the literature may still have that. Its common names include Sunset Husk Mallow, Musk Mallow, Tropic Jewel Hibiscus. Ooh, I love that one. Tropic Jewel Hibiscus. It sounds all... exotic. Or is that now a problematic word? I don't know. Anyway. Pests for this plant include the same ones that would attack okra, which is aphids, slugs, and whiteflies. Though, in growing it here, I don't really see these problems. My okra does just fine. I didn't really get it on this plant. Knock on wood, of course. Uh, the young leaves are edible, raw, cooked, and impart a mucilaginous compound for thickening soups and stews. It's much like okra, really. You cook it enough and it breaks down and it's not a problem. The seeds are used to make perfume which is interesting, and the bark and sap is used in certain types of herbal medicine. Also fascinating. I have no idea, if you have these growing near beehives, I have no idea what it would do to the honey, but it'd probably be pretty darn interesting, I'm guessing. It is deer resistant because the deer don't like the mucilage. Yeah, screw you, deer. Yeah, 
What? As I mentioned, it is very closely related to okra as evidenced by the first portion of its scientific name, Abel Moschus. Now, here's some interesting names that come out of the countries that are very familiar with this. In the Philippines, it has the following names, Lagaque, Likwe, Gikwe, Barracue, Natina Salayat. Now, I've probably mangled the crap out of those, and any of you who are from the Philippines or understand the dialect, when I, you want to give me a pronunciation key or a clarification, I would be very appreciative. But it doesn't stop there. Because in Japan, it is called Tororo Aoi. I don't know how to pronounce that. But Tororo is obvious, but the Aoi part, which is the second part of the word, I'm not so sure. I'd love a clarification, folks. Anyway, it is used to make a paper called washi there, which is fascinating. In Korea, it is called, I'm going to mangle this, folks, foreign dialect mangling alert. Hwang Chok Kyu. Again, if anybody's Korean out there and wants to clarify how to pronounce that, I would love it. Um, it is used to make dakpu, which is the basis for a local type of paper in Korea. Now, nutrition. There aren't many articles on how nutritious this plant is, but all of them do seem to suggest a bunch of the same things. Specifically, that it's high in vitamin A, C, and iron, and has 12% dry protein. I'm not for sure, precisely sure what the difference between dry and moist protein is, other than But, it's an interesting thing to consider. This plant is basically very good, good for you and healthy. And now that it, I found out that it's a perennial, I'm just thinking of all kinds of groovy garden things to do with this plant. Yeah, yes. But anyway, that is South Sea Salad Tree. And that is our hundredth video. That's some pretty amazing stuff. Now, I know in the last few days I have uploaded a crap ton of videos, including two minis and five full legs. At 100, who knows what plant I'm going to cover next. Stay tuned and find out. If you like this episode or you have any questions, you know, um, please hit the like, but feel free to comment if you want to know anything about this or you have any information. Maybe you grow this and we can swap tips on growing it. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Hit up the blog. There's a new article going up there soon. It's garden photos and talking about the stuff in them. And as always, folks, keep them growing. Thanks for watching.